Welcome to the new Acids, Bases and pH playlist. So like with the other playlists, your buffers and your transition elements and so on, each video contains a past exam question on this particular topic. Uh, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So just click on that, download the questions, have a go and then play on when you're ready for the answers. OK, so make a start. So we've got some information about glycolic acid and thioglycolic acid. Um, the first part of the question starts off with glycolic acid. We're told it reacts with sodium hydroxide and we've been presented with um, this pH titration curve. First thing we've got to do is write the equation for the reaction that takes place in the titration. But we are told that one mole of glycolic acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. So it's a straightforward one-to-one -one reaction and there it is there so it's this h plus ion that's going to react with the oh minus ion from the sodium hydroxide you get your water and the salt will look like that next part we've got to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in moles per decimeter cubed you'll notice i've highlighted the vertical section of the ph titration curve that's actually going to tell us the volume of sodium hydroxide that was needed in the titration so the titra was 22 centimetres cubed. Now we know that it's just a straightforward titration question with a nice easy one-to-one -one ratio. So the moles of glycolic acid used is going to be the concentration times the volume. Remember that's got to be in decimeters cubed. So that's how many moles of glycolic acid we used. The moles of sodium hydroxide will be exactly the same because of the one-to-one -one ratio. So the concentration of the sodium hydroxides, the moles over the volume that they're in. So it's going to be the moles over 0.022. So 0.142 moles per decimeter cubed. I'm giving it the three significant figures because all the other data is to three. And the final part of it, what important factor does the student need to consider when deciding on the most suitable indicator? So I've already got it written in there. The pH range of the indicator must fall in the vertical section of the pH curve. So on the curve that we were presented with, that's roughly between six and 10 pH wise. Moving on to part B, you'll notice I've written up the dissociation of the glycolic acid. That's gonna help me with the Ka expression. So remember, Ka is just a acid dissociation constant. It's an equilibrium constant for a weak acid. So it's gonna be the equilibrium concentrations of these multiplied by each other divided by the equilibrium concentration of that. And just a word of caution here, because it was specified that it was glycolic acid that they wanted the expression for, we have to give the full formula of everything. We can't do the generic version of this with the HA and the A minus. The other thing you can't do either is give the simplified version of this. So in some calculations, you would say they're the same as each other. So you would condense this down to H plus concentration squared over that. Can't do that in this case, it wants the full Ka expression. Next part, we've got to calculate Ka for glycolic acid. Now we can use the um, simplified version. Remember, these concentrations will be the same, so we can do this. So have we got the H plus concentration? Not quite. We've been given the pH, so we're going to go 10 to the minus pH to get the H plus concentration. Obviously, we need to square that and then divide that by the original concentration of the glycolic acid, which was 0.125, so that would go in there. So I've put the numbers in. We'll do the units in a second, um, but anyway, it's coming out at Ka of 1.46 times 10 to the minus 4. So if we think about units, we'll go back to this. We've got moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top, divided by moles per decimeter cubed. So one of these will cancel with that we're left with moles per decimeter cubed for the units. And the final part of B, bit of a sting in the tail list and really stingy amount of marks. One mark, I think, is not really enough for this, but there you go. So uh, I've got the generic um, dissociation for a weak monobasic acid, which glycolic acid is. So the initial concentration of the HA, the glycolic acid, is that. Obviously, we don't have any of these yet. And then if we think about after dissociations occurred, we knew that the concentration of H plus ions from the pH was 4.27 times 10 to the minus 3. So to generate the H plus ions, obviously the same number of moles of um, HA has dissociated. 
So the percentage dissociation is going to be the amount dissociated over the original times 100, which you can see comes out at 3.41%. And the final part of the question, we've got to identify the two conjugate acid-base pairs in this acid-base equilibrium. You'll notice I've already highlighted one pair in yellow. So let's just have a look at how we'll go from that to that. So to turn this into this, this has to accept a proton. So this is obviously a base. So we'll call that base one. And obviously the other species is the acid of that pair. So this is acid one. And if we have a look at the other pair, so we've got the ammonium ion and ammonia. So what's going on here to go from that to that? That's donating a proton. So this is an acid, but it's from a different pair. So we call it acid two which means that the ammonia is base 2.